You get diagnosed when you're about six years old, when you're not walking right, and they put you on crutches. By the time you're 10, you're in a wheelchair. By the time you're 20, you're in a completely vegetated state. Most people die before their 25th birthday. Dan's lived to be 33 years old, still alive and kicking. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> still alive. He's actually died seven times in his life and been resuscitated seven. And I once asked him, I said, Dan, what happens after you die? And he said, nothing. <laughs> so good luck with your religion and your faith. Uh, I'll take an actual statistic. <laughs> now his family had since moved to Melbourne. I had moved to the Great Britain. I went to do the Melbourne Comedy Festival. This is about a year ago. Uh, I hadn't seen him in all that time. His brother Andrew came to see my show and then Andrew took me to see Dan and I went in to see him and I'd never seen anyone live this long with his disease and he's laying on a bed. His eyelids are a muscle that he can't keep open anymore and they're just, he's just squinting through these little things and he has a breathing mask on him to keep his lungs working because his lungs are a muscle that he can't keep pumping. He has a, a, a heart monitoring machine in case he flatlines in the middle of the night and someone has to resuscitate him. And as soon as I walked in and saw this guy that I used to run around with as a child, I burst into tears. There's nothing worse you can give anyone in this world than pity, you know? I went in the corridor, I felt like a right prick, and I was fucking wiping my eyes off. And I went back in, and I sat with Dan, his brother Andrew went off to work, and me and Dan chatted for a while. 20 minutes into the conversation, Dan says to me, Jim, I'm 32 years old. I've never been with a woman. Will you take me to a prostitute? And that's where the story picks up, ladies and gentlemen. Because I went, fuck yeah! And he went, but don't tell my brother, he wouldn't understand. I said, that's where you're wrong. I have known your brother my entire life. Trust me, he will understand. And against Dan's will, when Andrew came home from work, I pulled Andrew aside and said, Andrew, look, here's the deal. Dan's asked me to take him to a prostitute. I'm gonna do it whether you like it or not, but I think as his brother, you should come along and help out. And Andrew went, we're not doing it. And I went, why? And he went, it'll kill him. And I went, <laughs> He's gonna die soon anyway. This is a good way for him to go. Like, sure, we'll have to answer a few questions. <laughs> And he said, we're not doing it. And I said, why? And he goes, because mum doesn't like you already. <laughs> and I went, your mum's never liked me. That's why I'm the right guy to kill your brother. <laughs> and he said, all right, we'll do it, but he can't have full sex. Full sex will kill him. He can only have a blowjob. And I thought that was fairly reasonable. <laughs> so we went back in and saw Dan. He was where we left him. <laughs> and we said, Dan, here's the deal. I know you not, told me not to tell your brother, but I told your brother, me and him are both gonna take you to the knock shop tomorrow, mate, but you can't have full sex. You can only have a blowjob. And Dan went, I want full sex. And his brother Andrew went, Dan, you're in no position to argue with anyone ever. <laughs> then Dan reluctantly agreed. Now, prostitution in Australia is legal. So I spent the rest of the afternoon going through the phone book trying to find a brothel with wheelchair access. <laughs> Best afternoon ever! <laughs> Eventually I found one, the biggest brothel in the Southern Hemisphere, the Daily Planet, or as the Australians call it, Four Floors of Whores. <laughs> it's a 24-hour brothel because Australia's a go-ahead country. So we decided we were gonna go early in the morning, like real early, like 6 a.m. We wanted to go when the place was quiet and we weren't gonna cause a scene. So we wake him up at six o'clock in the morning. It's hard to tell if he's awake. And <laughs> we get him in his chair. Now he hasn't got your bog standard fucking wheelchair. He's got one of those big sort of silver looking things with the truck tires on it. I think the model's called a hawking. And 
Even though his muscles don't work, they get sore. So this thing can move him from side to side and back to front and even into a full bed. So we get him in the chair, then we order a taxi. And then it's not like you have black cabs out there. It's like a normal car, but they've, they've modified the back to go higher. And they drive him up through the boot and they strap him in there. And he sits up high with windows all around him like a big retarded pope. <laughs> or as the Catholics would say, the Pope. <laughs> and we drive off to the brothel. Now when we get to the brothel, it takes 10 minutes to get him off the taxi. I see this as my window of opportunity. So while they're getting him off the taxi, I run into the brothel. Now there's two ways that brothels work. Either the prostitutes will stand in a row in their lingerie and you just pick the one that you want. Or they'll stand around in a bar in evening gowns and high heels and you walk up to the one that you like the look of, chat to her for a bit, act like you've got some type of connection with an Eastern European woman, <laughs> then take her upstairs and fuck her if you need your life to be this delusional. <laughs> this is one of these situations. So while they're getting Dan out of the cab, I run into the brothel and go, everyone, quickly, gather around. I haven't got much time. <laughs> and these 14 bemused hookers shuffle over and I went, look, here's the deal. I have a severely disabled friend with me. If you're not up for it, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> and one of them went, how bad is he? And I went, <laughs> <laughs> pretty fucking bad <laughs> and 10 of them said they wouldn't do it and I said well I respect that but can you please go and hide because I don't want him to be rejected by hookers <laughs> and these 10 girls shuffle away in their evening gowns and their high heels with gonorrhea falling out of them I, <laughs> I am now left with four girls the best looking one by a mile stays Dan Wills in, looking like Jabba the Hutt, breathing like Darth Vader. <laughs> Two of the girls run away and I'm like, are you fucking kidding, you sluts? <laughs> I just asked you nicely. <laughs> so we're now left with two girls. The best looking one's there, the other one's a fucking troll. <laughs> now out of respect for the ugly one, I go to Dan, I go, Dan, there's only two girls working today, mate. <laughs> which one do you want and he said the one in the green dress now neither of them had a green dress <laughs> I stand up and look at Andrew and went what the fuck is all this about and Andrew went oh yeah his eyes are fucked as well <laughs> now it turns out that Dan's colorblind it's not part of the condition it's just unfortunate <laughs> So, I sat with the hooker. Now I'm gonna pay for everything. Now the reason I'm gonna pay for everything is simple. I told Dan and Andrew that I would pay for everything as long as I got to tell this story to hundreds of thousands of people in the future. <laughs> and they said, of course you can, Jim, but be respectful and change our names which sounds like the right thing to do now, doesn't it? <laughs> now I haven't changed their names. <laughs> their names are Andrew and Daniel Con um, Connor from St Kilda, Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> I would have liked to have changed their names. It is the right thing to do. But I look at it this way. Even if I changed their names and their parents started watching my comedy, they'd be like, my word! Doesn't Randy and Steve sound like our kids? <laughs> Didn't Jim grow up with a lot of people with muscular dystrophy? <laughs> so I sat there with a the hooker and I said, how much for the half hour? And she said, 180. And I said, I'll give you 250 because I realise this is a specialty thing you're doing. And she goes... I got one question for you and I said, shoot. And she went, is he mentally retarded? And I went, <laughs> 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 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. I find mentally retarded people and take them to prostitutes. <laughs> I'll be masturbating in the corner. <laughs> he doesn't even know he's here. <laughs> and she went, okay then, but if there's two of you, we'll go, no, he's not mentally retarded. It's his choice to come here. There's a good chance he'll die. <laughs> and she went, what am I meant to do with him? And I went, I don't know. I've never been a hooker. <laughs> but I'm thinking, give him a bit of a show, dance around a bit, rub your tits in his face, then suck him off. <laughs> but don't sit on him or fuck him. <laughs> It'll kill him. <laughs> so we go up to the room, which thank God was on the first floor. And me and Andrew look at Dan like two proud parents watching our child go to school for the first time. <laughs> and then we leave, and as we proceed to leave, I pat Andrew on the back and I said, Andrew, you've been a good brother today. And he said, thanks, mate. And then we had a hug. And then we had that moment after a hug that Australian men have where we go, oh, get out of it, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and then I said, hey, Andrew, how does Dan get his clothes off? And Andrew went, fuck! <laughs> and we went back in. Andrew looks him up and down, and he turns to me and goes, look, he's very fragile. I know how he likes to be picked up. I'll lift him up, you take his pants off. Andrew gets behind, lifts him up by his armpits like I couldn't have figured out their magical hold. <laughs> I'm on my knees taking Dan's tracksuit pants off. He always wore tracksuit pants, never got into fashion. And <laughs> as I'm taking his tracksuit pants off, what many of you are wondering is, can Dan get an erection? <laughs> and the answer is yes. <laughs> Even though none of the muscles in his body work, the cock is not a muscle, the cock is a bit of skin that fills with blood. If he gets aroused up here, blood will rush to there. Now, what nobody knew about this 32-year-old virgin is that Dan's packing heat. 